Hi guys, Jeffrey here. In this video, I want to talk about the concept of emotional bulletproofness. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll know that being emotionally bulletproof is a staple. It's such an important foundation for you to be able to create safety in a relationship. So before I start this, I also want to outline to you how effective and how life-changing these principles have been for my clients. So here we have Kelly, for example. Kelly used to struggle with combat PTSD. For many years, he's tried therapy, he's tried counseling, he's tried all these heavy meds. And only when he took the program and actually followed these principles that I'm about to show you here did his life really begin to change. And he actually got off the meds, he actually stopped therapy as well, and he finally got over that combat PTSD. And so this is just emotional management 101, and this is crucial whether you're trying to use this in the context of a relationship or your work or whatever it is. This is just what it takes to properly manage your emotions. And in case you're new to this channel, my name is Jeffrey and I help men in long-term relationships or marriages with the right skills and knowledge to be able to design a thriving relationship by yourself. So if you want more content on this topic, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also click the bell button as well to be notified when I post new videos every single week. And before I begin this video, I also want to let you know that the masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up is still open. So if you want to join that masterclass, or if you want to submit your application for the Relationships Revival program as well, be sure to stick around to the very end of this video for an announcement on how you can join both those things. So before we begin talking about the pitfalls, let's talk about the basics first of how emotions form, what they are, and why some people are emotional, etc. So we start here with an event. And what we need to understand first and foremost is that the event itself never causes the emotions. So if let's say your partner does something bad or says something mean to you, and that makes you emotional, your partner saying something mean to you or doing something doesn't actually make you mad. The event itself cannot actually make you mad. So instead of the events making you angry and making you emotional, it's really how we interpret the world that affects how we feel about certain events. And we know this is true. We know that the events don't cause the emotions, but the interpretations do. The way we interpret it does. Because if you put, let's say, a hundred people in the same room, looking at the same things, with the same stimuli, with the same circumstance, those 100 people will have 100 very different emotions. And they're going to have 100 very different emotions simply because they're interpreting these events in very different ways. So when we look at these interpretations, these are really what causes emotion. And what really causes these interpretations in turn is our paradigms. It's the way we've been programmed to see the world, to interpret the world. Essentially, the paradigms are really the lens in which we view the world. If you view, for example, stonewalling, or gaslighting as a toxic thing that people do, as an abusive thing that people do, then whenever people stonewall you, you're going to interpret that as a negative thing and you're gonna get negative emotions. But of course, in my videos, I'll show you, and if you're new to my videos, you're gonna get offended by this, stonewalling and gaslighting may not always mean abuse. There's actually many other reasons for it. And if you can see this from a different paradigm like this, you will naturally have different interpretations which leads to different emotions when you're getting stonewalled, when you're getting uh, gaslit and so on, you're going to be more poised in the front of it. Now, when we understand these core basic tenet of how emotions form, we can start to understand pitfall number one, which is that you're using what we call the surviving approach, not the thriving approach to trying to manage your emotions or control your emotions. So when you look at the surviving approach, they're always focused on either the event side or the emotional side of things. So on the event side, they're trying to avoid or tolerate the events right? because they think that the event are what causes it. And so this leads to behaviors like gaslighting where you're pretending like something doesn't exist. You're just telling yourself, oh, that's fine, that's fine, right? And you're just suppressing the event and forgetting that the event even happened. The second thing that people do also is they try to suppress the emotion itself. So let's say the event happened and they feel angry and they're almost like clenching their fist and clenching their body to just keep themselves calm. They're using the willpower here to keep themselves calm, to try to either change their emotions or suppress their emotions. So they're really just trying to change their emotion. And I call this surviving approach because either when you're suppressing and just forgetting that the event happened or trying to suppress the emotion itself, it's almost like you are holding this big boulder in front of you, right? The boulder is the conflicts, is the challenges, is the difficulties, and you're just really holding on for dear life. And you're using a lot of willpower to try to just keep the emotions bottled in and make sure it doesn't show in the way you say things, in the way you do things, in the way you talk, etc. If you take this approach, if your approach to emotion management is just to hold it in, it's always going to fail. Because number one, 
the negative emotions arise involuntarily. So often when we look at this flow again of event, paradigm, interpretation, and emotion, our paradigms often color the interpretations in a very automated way, in a very subconscious way. And sometimes you might even get to the point where you feel certain emotions. You feel angry, for example. You feel intense rage. And you don't even know how you got there. After the fact, you reflect on this and you go, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have gotten that angry. But in the moment, you just can't control it. Because again, it's very subconscious. And number two is that this is such thing called the emotional flywheel. And the flywheel, if you don't know, is, you know, if you look at cars, for example, the flywheel is what keeps the car moving at a good momentum after you, let's say, let go of the gas. And this flywheel applies to emotions as well, where if you are already feeling negative emotions from the event itself, it's really hard to then try to use positive interpretations to try to kill those negative emotions, which is why often when you look at someone who's depressed, for example, it's really hard to get them out of that depressed state because that emotional flywheel has already started going. In the same way, if you're angry, for example, it's really hard to get you out of the state of being angry because that emotional flywheel has already started. And so if you're trying to use your willpower here to try to hold your emotions in, what you're doing is you're trying to stop the emotional flywheel of anger, of despair, of hopelessness after they've started, which is really, really hard. You can't really do that. And so why a lot of people often fail to catch themselves in the moment. And you can't really hide this as well. Uh, you can't really hide the fact that you're in the uh, surviving mindset because no matter how much you try to hold it in, it's always gonna show through the micro expressions and micro tones that you have as well. And this is why, again, a lot of people who are trying to manage their emotions, they start with a promise. They say, I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna be more calm. I'm gonna be controlling my emotions better. But then again, when the moments get tough, they fail because of these reasons above again. And when they fail again, they regret and they promise even harder. And each time they're feeling more and more guilty themselves because they can't really break through this cycle. And over time, your partner starts to trust you even less because as you keep promising and you keep breaking their promise, the trust goes down even further. Now, what we want is what we call the thriving approach, which is when we are focusing here on what we can actually control. So we know, for example, that conflicts and the events itself, the negative events itself are out of our control. We can't really control whether this comes up or not. We also know that emotion that arises from that is out of our control as well. But what we do know is that we can control our paradigms. We can control our interpretations as well. So this is what the thriving approach does. We start by changing our reflexive paradigms. We start to look at what are the deeply held beliefs and the values and um, the way that we see the world. And let's start to bring it back to the consciousness. Let's shift it and let's program a much healthier one. And when you do this, that will change the way you interpret your world and that will change your emotions. For example, you know, if you watch a lot of my videos, we try to change your emotions and your paradigms around relationships in general, about how to view stonewalling, about how to view your partner wanting to leave you, about how to view this event, that, this tough event that you are facing right now. These paradigm shifts are very crucial because they allow you to have different interpretations of an event, which in turn have different emotions. And a lot of you watching my videos may have already felt this before, where you feel calmer, you feel better, you feel more hopeful, you feel different when you watch the videos, simply because I was able to change your paradigms around a certain event. And this thriving approach will always be more effective because naturally you see the world in a healthier way. And also because your paradigms have been changed, your reflexive interpretations also change. And therefore your reflexive emotions also change to become more positive. So that bad emotions don't even come up and you don't even feel any bad emotions arising at all in this case. This positivity shows in the microtones and the micro expressions that you have and you don't need to fake anything. You don't need to hold anything in. In fact, if you are this, if you are facing this, and if you can, let's say, have the right paradigm to see conflicts well, to see difficult moments well, to see stonewalling well, to see gaslighting well, for example, then the more difficult things get, the more tough things get, the more you actually thrive. And this is why we use this term thriving versus surviving. You know, if you look at, let's say, top athletes like LeBron James back in his heyday, for example, you know, it's usually not until the moments that really matter, the last minute clutch moments that he becomes his best. So basically the more difficulty, the more pressure, the more challenge he gets, the more he rises. Same thing here, the thriving mindset, the more pressure you get, the more you rise. 
Well, the surviving mindset, the more pressure you get, you can hold on, but you're going to follow that trend of going downhill eventually. And so a lot of people, when they say, for example, Jeff, I know how to be bulletproof until my wife says this, unless my wife says this, that is the definition that you are still in the surviving mindset because then you're still holding on for your life. You're not thriving despite you are failing because at that point. So I hope this makes sense here of the difference between the surviving approach and the thriving approach and how surviving is really when you are just using your willpower to keep your emotions in check. This is basically, for lack of better analogy, clenching your asshole to keep your shit in whenever tough things happen. Here you can never thrive. You can only just barely survive. You can hold on for dear life here. Well, the thriving approach is trying to change the reflexive paradigms that you have and change the reflexive interpretations that you have. And here, you can really thrive despite. And the tougher things get, the more you can thrive here. And this is what it means to be truly bulletproof, when you can master the thriving mindset. Pitfall number two is that you may be channeling your willpower in the incorrect ways. So if I ask you, for example, okay, let's try to grow your immune system. Do you, one, will yourself to try to have a higher immune system? So do you go sit on the couch and go, oh, Super Saiyan style, trying to summon some immune system? Of course not. That's absurd. What you would do is you would identify the right process. For example, eating oranges, sleeping better, right? eating healthier, exercising more. And you're going to channel your willpower to those processes. So you don't channel your willpower to the outcome of getting immune system you channel your willpower towards identifying the right process and playing out the right process as well. Now, if you say it like this, it sounds very obvious, but why should we not take the same approach to actually managing and changing our emotions as well and our ability to manage our emotions as well? A lot of people, when they're trying to become bulletproof, they're trying to channel the willpower towards becoming bulletproof and not identifying the right processes to becoming bulletproof and focusing their efforts on those processes. Now, the second thing to understand, too, about this willpower aspect is that I want you to think about any performer in any field. It can be a dancer, it can be an athlete, for example, anybody you, think, you can think of. If you look at these top performers, you'll always realize here that the hardest part of their performance, the hardest part of their job is not the performance. The hardest part is actually the practice, right? They practice really deliberately, really hard so that the performance can be very effortless, can be very easy, can be just very, very programmed. So the channeling again here, the willpower towards the practice, not towards the performance itself. You know, if you're a performer and you're showing up to the performance, not really understanding and you see, it seems like the performance is really difficult, you're not a very good performer. Now, when you say it like this, it sounds very obvious, right? Of course, channeling willpower to the practices, not the performance. But often we don't do this as well. A lot of people try to wait till things are dire, till things are bad, till the performance itself, till the conversation itself, to really practice their bulletproof vest. And this is why a lot of people often fail. Again, you have the outcome here. Of, let's say you're being bulletproof. You want to stay calm under very difficult moments. And the problem again is that most channel the willpower here. Most wait till the very last minute as well until the need to perform before they actually care about practicing or care about the bulletproof vest, etc. What I want you to do instead is identify the right processes to becoming bulletproof. For example, reprogramming your new paradigms that we talked about and channeling willpower to those processes before the need to program even. So you might be asking right now, what processes are you talking about? Well, I'm going to talk about this in the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But I want to talk about also pitfall number three. And this one is what I call, you're falling for the purple giraffe paradox. What do I mean here? So I want you to try something with me. Try to not think about a purple giraffe. Don't think about a purple giraffe. What are you thinking about? A purple giraffe. You know, if I didn't tell you, don't think about a purple giraffe, there's no way you'd be thinking about a purple giraffe. But because I said, don't think about it, you're thinking about the thing I told you to not think about. So the important part here is that what you resist, it persists. When you try to not think about something, you actually end up thinking more about that thing. So again, this is why the surviving approach doesn't work. You know, if you look at anger, for example, when you're feeling angry, a lot of people who are taking the surviving approach will say, well, stop being angry stop being angry. But when you tell yourself to stop being angry, you're actually getting more and more angry. Because now you're not only thinking about all the events that make you angry, but you're now you're feeling guilty and angry about the fact that you're feeling angry as well. So this creates this really bad chain reaction where the more you try something, the more you try to stop something, the, an emotion, the more it persists, the more it grows. 
It's almost like when you're sleeping, for example, the more you try to sleep, the less you can sleep. The more you try to rest, the less you can rest. So trying to block out and resisting negative feelings actually perpetuates it. And this is again why a lot of people, when they feel angry, for example, they can't really get out of that flywheel fast enough. So they end up building it up and they get berserk or crazy. They end up doing something they regret and they realize, they tell themselves afterwards, well, why couldn't I have stopped it? Why didn't I stop it? Because they couldn't stop it because they fall into this paradox. Which is why in our program, we talk deeply about what we call the seat of consciousness. This is when you're simply observing your emotions and you're letting your emotions pass. You're not resisting it, but you're letting your emotions pass. And this is a massive part of your bulletproof vest as well, besides just changing your reflexive paradigms too. Now, the last pitfall here is pitfall number four. And this is when you're either too stoic or you're too swept away by emotions. So if you can imagine with me here a spectrum. And on the one end of the spectrum, of course, is when you're too swept away by emotions. Of course, this is not where we want to go. Pretty obvious. It's impossible to create safety with someone who cannot manage their emotions and get swept away by emotions too easily. But you can also go to the other extreme here, which is also not good when you're trying to be too stoic. You're trying to be too robotic. You're trying to have no emotions and you're just suppressing all emotion via the surviving approach or suppressing emotion and blocking emotion because you're falling for the purple giraffe paradox. And it's impossible to create safety here because it's impossible to connect with someone on that emotional level if you show up to the conversation being too stoic. For example, you know, if let's say your daughter comes home crying one day and you're being very robotic and stoic, it's impossible for your daughter to feel that emotional connection to you, emotional trust to you, same thing with your wife. If she comes to you with a problem and you're extremely stoic about things, being robotic about things, it makes you very difficult to relate, very difficult to trust as well. And it's difficult to feel safe around someone like that. And it's usually when you're too stoic here, it's caused by number one to three, pitfalls number one to three. When you're trying to surviving approach, when you're trying to just like hold everything in, suppress bad emotions, or when you're falling for the purple giraffe paradox, for example. So either of these two extremes are always bad. And we always say in our videos, the answers in life are never in the extremes, but always in the middle ground. So the middle ground here is what we call controlled compassion. This is when we're able to show the right emotions for the right circumstance, for the right time, but they're also in a very controlled way as well. So for example, when your daughter comes home running back to you about a bully in school, this is when you're stooping down and you're relating to their pain. You are able to feel their pain even, be compassionate and show compassion towards their pain. And you're coaching them through this compassion as well. So you're showing emotion in the way you talk, in the way you present yourself. You might stoop down to their level even. But the emotions that you show is appropriate for the right circumstance, but also shown in a very controlled way. This controlled compassion stage is where you want to be. This middle ground is where you want to be. But again, a lot of people, the problem is that because they're playing out the surviving approach or also falling into these paradoxes, the pitfalls that we talked about, they can only embrace the extremes because the only way that you can get to the middle ground here in controlled compassion is if you take the thriving and right approach. So what is the right process to actually building your bulletproof vest in? What is the right process here? So in our program, the process is a three-stage process. So first, we need to build the awareness here. And we need to learn how to be aware of our emotions as they arise, either positive or negative, and allow your emotions to form and then to pass afterwards. So form and pass. So we're not falling into the purple giraffe paradox here where we're trying to block or suppress the emotion. We're simply saying, okay, a negative emotion is arising. Let me catch that. Let me be aware of that very, very quickly. And sometimes a lot of people, when they first join the program, it takes them about five, 10 minutes, or even an hour sometimes to really be aware of their emotions. Because again, your natural instinct is to try to block it, try to suppress it, but you need to allow it to form. And we do this from what we call the seat of consciousness that we showed earlier. And why things like, for example, mindfulness, the art of observation, observing your emotions, observing life, events, etc., is so key. Now, once we allow these emotions to form and we are become aware of it, we observe it, we shift it. And so this is when we use and learn new and healthier paradigms in which we can view the world, view conflicts, etc. And we use these new paradigms to figure out basically, hey, once you become aware of the negative emotions, let's shift it very consciously. And this is what I try to show you in many of my videos here, uh, different paradigms of how you look at things. And once you shift the emotion like that, you try to program the new paradigms, the new emotion. And in our program, we use what we call auto-suggestions to do this here, where we're using 
a lot of very scientific principles of how what makes knowledge and emotion stick in our brain and what makes us feel emotionally resonant with something. And we use that to really program the new paradigms, these new ways of seeing the world deep into our subconscious, deep into our emotions as well. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into this in this video. Auto suggestions is a topic for another video entirely, but this is a very powerful tool. So if you can take these three stages of becoming aware first, shifting and reprogramming the new interpretations, that's how you eventually become bulletproof. That's how you play out the thriving approach. That's how you avoid the purple giraffe paradox. That's how you avoid being too stoic or being too sort of way by emotions. And the important part also is that you also want to treat this and do this like a performer. So what that means is that you want to channel your willpower in the correct ways where you're channeling your willpower towards the process of building awareness, shifting, and programming. And you're trying to also channel your willpower towards the practice itself and practicing every day before the need to perform. So that by the time you actually face conflicts or have a conversation, your programming is already there. The performance is the easy part. That's how you can really allow your bulletproofness to permeate every part of your microtones, your micro expressions, etc. You're not trying to fake any of things which your partner can see through anyway. So I hope that was helpful, guys. I know that was a deeper video uh, and more technical video, but I think it's crucial that a lot of you guys understand these technical ways of how to actually manage your emotions properly in a relationship. And if you want to learn more about how this has been applied across many different relationships, across many different uh, cases, you can check out the client stories I have below this video. And I think a lot of you will find those videos very inspiring because again, in all those videos, the bulletproof vest is always the number one key to how you can create safety as well. And if you want to learn more about this process of how to actually build your bulletproof vest, etc., and how this bulletproof vest connects to the overall view of how you can reconcile in your relationship, you can join me in my masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up. In that masterclass, I'll show you the exact steps and process that all my clients have used to go from very dire situations to where they're reconciling and, and reconciling for the long term as well. So if you want to join that masterclass or if you want to submit your application for the Relationships Revival Program, please uh, click the link above my head or also down below this video as well. And if you'd like to download a guide where I can show you the different ways to communicate with your partner more effectively, you can also download the guide I have for you above my head or also down below this video. And finally, if you want to join me in my free community where you can have a member of my team answer your questions for you, you can join me in my free Facebook group down below this video as well. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, you find it valuable, like it and subscribe to this channel. It would really help the channel out and get this video out to more people as well. So we'd really appreciate that. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. I would love to hear from you as well. For now, I will leave you with just two other videos with more skills and knowledge for you to design a thriving relationship on your own as well. For now, I'll see you in the next video.